Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a book unhaul. Yes, I am going to be getting rid of some books with you today. Um, these are books that either I read them and didn't really like them, I read them and they were okay, um, or I've DNF'd, I have no intentions of reading them, just a mixture of some things. Um, I am really focusing on decluttering my shelves. I really try not to keep books that I didn't fully love or um, or, or aren't on, on my TBR. Like if they serve me no purpose, if they're just sitting around and I look at them and I don't love them or it's something that I want to read in the future, I'm getting rid of it. I'm trying to keep things as like clutter free as humanly possible because you know, we are planning on hopefully moving into a like bigger, more spacious place in a few months. Um, we'll kind of see where, where things go, where life goes, but um, we're just, with all the animals and stuff, we're just like running out of room in this apartment and our animals need to be fully separated. So, um, because my dog kills everything. So yeah, I just have too many books. So I'm trying to like declutter things. So I'm like getting rid of stuff. I'm trying not to buy as many books this year. I truly am just trying to read what I have on my shelves for the most part. I have bought some books this year, you know. Okay, so this is in no particular order, but the first one is The Exorcist by William Peter Blady. I read this and it was just underwhelming, honestly. I kind of thought it was a little bit boring. It was kind of a slog to get through. Sorry, not sorry. These like classic style of books don't always work for me and I just found it, I don't know, it's supposed to be like terrifying and shocking, the most terrifying novel ever written, but like maybe in 19 whenever the hell this was written, 1972 this was terrifying, but in 2024 like it wasn't doing it for me. Then I have In the Miso Soup by Ryu Mirakami. Um, this one, it's supposed to be like gross, shocking, extreme horror, and like it was okay, but it just wasn't really my thing. The main character rambles so much. Just rambles about random topics and like something like gory and crazy would happen, and then it's just like pages and pages and pages of him just rambling on and on and on and like the writing just really wasn't my thing so speaking of not my thing Eric LaRocca uh we can never leave this place I think this author is so freaking talented and I've never once doubted that in my life beautiful writing but it's just not my thing like it's very flowery metaphors and you know intellectual and I don't know listen I'm just I just read to have a good time I don't read to like decipher things and figure out their meaning so unfortunately this is an author that's just not for me I mean I like his work and I can appreciate it but also understand that it's not for me at the same time so the burning girls by cj tudor this is another author that's kind of just not for me um i remember liking this book i really liked it and then it just got really confusing like there were so many twists in it that i got confused it was a little convoluted it was just a little bit too fast paced twist 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 for me um, that it was just doing too much, but not in a good way. This book here, Festival by Christopher Golden. I never read this one. Um, honestly, just doesn't seem like something that I would be into. I mean, the whole like metal bands in horror concept is great. And this has a lot of like cool illustrations, but it's just about a Viking slaughter. I don't know, maybe Justin will read this one. I'll ask him, but I, it was something that was in like a Nightworms package, which I don't get anymore, by the way, because they had too many freaking books that I just ended up hating. So I don't know. Number one fan by Meg Ellison. Um, I liked this book. 
I think that, you know, the whole like stalker aspect really freaked me out. If you're looking for a stalker thriller, I'd check this one out, but I just didn't fully like the writing style. It was like super like tension filled and then we just got a whole bunch of backstory that I just didn't care about and the back and forth was just... I don't know, it wasn't sustaining my attention. Um, I would recommend it to certain people, but it's just not something that I'm completely in love with. And then same with this one here, Howls from Hell. Um, this is a horror anthology, the forewords by Grady Hendrix. I have a very toxic relationship with short story collections, anthologies. You guys know this if you've been here a while. I don't really like short story collections. I'm choking. Oh my god. I've been filming for seven minutes. And I'm already choking on the dry air in here. Um, I don't really like short story collections because there's always like a couple stories that are really good and then a couple that are like huge duds. And I don't know, they just don't really do it for me. So this is a another case of, oh, I liked some of them. I didn't like some of them. So it's nothing that I'm like fully obsessed with. So yeah. And I'm sorry if you've gifted me any of these books and I'm getting rid of them. Like if I could keep all my gifts from people, I would, but I just feel terrible because I don't have enough space in this apartment. Like I was saying, we don't have enough space here. So these three bookshelves are literally all that I have. So, and they're completely full. And I just, I don't want to keep something that I'm not fully in love with, you know? Um, but I do read every single book that was gifted to me, so. And th obviously, thank you so much, and I, I completely appreciate it, and I love you guys, but I just don't want anyone to take, like, offense, okay? Um, and then speaking of Nightworms, <laughs> I have two more here. These are both short story collections, Twilight at the Gates and Beautiful Atrocities. This one's by Mark Allen Gunnels, and this one's by Ross Jeffrey. Um, I like Ross Jeffrey's writing, the, all the stains that remain or whatever, loved that book. And then I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to read this one. But it's just, I, I just, I can't get myself to read short story collections all that often unless it's an author that I'm like 100% sure that I'm in love with. And like, I don't know, I read one book by him that I really liked. But I mean, is this something that's worth reading? Let me know. Um, and then this one I haven't really heard anything about. It's supposed to be similar to like the Twilight Zone kind of stories, which I love the Twilight Zone. That was like my favorite show as a kid. But again, am, realistically, am I like dying to read these? No. Dark Corners by Megan Golden. I freaking hated this book. I, what is this even about? <laughs> um... Yeah, see, I don't even remember what it's about. The FBI is looking for this missing girl, and then our main character is a podcaster. I'm just, I'm tired of the freaking book of the month podcast thrillers. I'm just over it. Um, This book here, Cross Her Heart by Sarah Pinborough. Um, I remember this one being okay. Like, I liked it. I didn't dislike it. Um, I remember it being slow, but do I remember this book? No. That's what I mean. Like, I don't want books on my shelf where I don't even remember what they're about because they were like, meh. You know, like I'm trying to only keep things that I would reread in the future or that I loved that I can use in a video because I loved it and it's a recommendation of mine. This one was just like, okay. White Horse by Erica Wirth. I never read this book. I think I tried reading it and I DNF'd. I just couldn't get into it. It's about like heavy metal. Again, I love these like concepts of metal bands being in horror books because I love metal. But then it's like, I don't know, haunted by visions, hunted by a creature. I was like, eh. Am I dying to read this? No. So someone else will probably appreciate it more than me. Ruth Ware, The Lion Game. I've heard horrible things about this book. <laughs> I'm not a huge Ruth Ware fan. This is one that I actually found from like a little free library or something. And then I read a couple Ruth Ware books. I don't think I liked any of them. And then I was like, okay, I have no desire to read this after that because I heard this is like the worst one. So 
Anybody Home by Michael Sedlinger. I hated this book. It's a home invasion book. I thought it was boring as hell. I hated the writing style. It's very like you, 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 you. That's what I think about that one. Never Have I Ever by Jocelyn Jackson. I just, this is another one I found in a free library. I don't know why I take books from free libraries and then I don't want to read them and then I just end up putting them back in there. Something about spilling secrets, I don't know. Um, the New Neighbor by Carter Wilson. I read this book. I thought it was okay. It was long. I don't really remember it. I was kind of bored throughout some of it. Like, I just remember it being like, meh. And it's very similar to that show. I can't think of the show. Oh man, what is that show? You know the show on Netflix where people are like leaving notes in this guy's mailbox and they're like spying on him? I can't think of the show. It was very similar to that, but like not as good. <laughs> so actually I think that show went downhill too I don't I don't even remember I don't remember the show I don't remember the book but yeah it's a mediocre thriller that I don't remember um The Long Shadows of October by Christopher Triana I didn't like this one it's about like this witch succubus ghost woman um I just I, I didn't think it was like scary I, I I was just I hated the characters a lot of like teenage boy type characters I just, I couldn't, I couldn't get into this one. I found it very underwhelming. Probably my least favorite Christopher Triana book. Maybe not. I don't know. There's like two or three Christopher Triana books that I don't like, and this is one of them. I just could not get into this one to save my life, so hopefully someone else will appreciate this one more than me. Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn. This is historical fiction. It was very heavy on like guns and weapons and her like fighting and using her guns and like, I don't know. I only read historical fiction to cry and this one just didn't really do it for me. <laughs> I was bored with all the like action gun scenes in this one. Um, I guess I'll just stick to Kristen Hanna. Bad Vibrations by Lucy Littner. This is extreme horror. I just couldn't get into this one. This one was very satirical and sarcastic, which I love, but it was over the top. It was just kind of ridiculous and I it was the the point was to be ridiculous, but this one just I don't know. I think because it was so like goofy and over the top, I was bored. Are You Happy Now by Hannah Jameson. I absolutely fucking hate this book. No, I'm not happy now. I'm depressed and miserable that I even have to mention this book again because it's trash. Um, this is about like these people, there's a virus that breaks out and they don't know if it's like a depression sort of thing, but you're just following these people moan about their lives the entire book and like listen I'm someone that moans about their life every day but like I wouldn't want to read a book about myself and my mental problems you do you know what I mean <laughs> so I don't know it was just very boring and ridiculous I hate this book so much get it out of my face All right my neck is like really starting to bother me I have like massive massive neck problems Oof, she's hurting my neck is so worn down from holding up this huge brain of mine. Next, Writers and Lovers by Lily King. I hated this book. Again, this is just a book about absolutely nothing. It's like about this woman who is a waitress and has writer's block. That's the entire book. Like, you don't even need to know anything else. It's like 300 pages of just that. Then I have Bridge by Lauren Bucas. I've tried reading this. I couldn't get into the writing. It's like a thriller sci-fi uh, book but I just couldn't get into it I, I don't I don't even know what it was it was just one of those books where I've tried reading it like three times and each time like I just could not get into the story I could not get into the character I just didn't give a shit I don't know what it was about this writing but I just couldn't get into it um, another book that I've tried reading a few times and DNF'd the, fav my, the favorite sister by Jessica Knoll um, again, I just, I didn't care about these characters, I didn't care about the plot, I thought it was just annoying. I don't know, these characters were just so irritating to me, and then I looked on Goodreads and saw it has an average of like 
three stars or lower and I was like okay it's obviously trash so that's my sign to unhaul. Hail Santa by John McNee. I didn't think that this was a bad book. I liked it. It is extreme horror, extreme horror holiday Christmas um but I just don't see myself rereading this one. Like it was okay. It's just not a favorite of mine. I'm not super into Christmas horror I've discovered last year. So I mean it's okay. I liked it, but I'd rather, like, these um, arcs that I get and stuff, sometimes I put them in, like, little free libraries because then someone else can get it and read it and hopefully enjoy it and then kind of, like, you know, kind of helps, like, spread the word about indie authors a little bit. So that's usually what I end up doing with books like these that I liked but I'm not, like, obsessed with. Um, so that way, like, someone else can get their hands on it. Hopefully, I might be traumatizing people. I don't know. Maybe I'm traumatizing people, but... Maybe that's the goal, no? <laughs> Full Immersion... Full Immersion by G Gemma Amore. I'm probably butchering everyone's name, but, um... This one I liked. It's about postpartum depression. It's like a thriller sci-fi. I liked this one, um, but I wasn't like obsessed with it. It's nothing that I want to reread. It was okay. Like I gave it like a 3.5, I think. Um, I would recommend this one. Do I want it sitting on my shelf? No, but I do think it was decent. The Elementals by Michael McDowell. Never read this one but I don't even know why I own it. Why did I buy this? Because it's nothing that I would want to read. It's from like 1981. It's like a classic slow burn haunted horror book and it's just it doesn't even sound like something that I would enjoy reading. It's been sitting on my shelf forever. It's getting a new home. Sweet Pea by CJ Scoos. Um, this has also been sitting on my shelf forever. I have no intentions of reading it. It's a thriller, but it's almost 500 pages, and it's like book one of, I think there's like, I don't know, there's two books, three books. I think it might be a two book series, but like, I've heard that this is boring, and it's almost 500 pages, and there's a ton of like British slang in it, people were telling me, and like, I have no intentions. I If a thriller has more than one book, chances are I don't want to read it because I hate thrillers that like drag on and on and on and on. And then it's like, I, I just, I have no need or want to read a thriller series. Do you know what I mean? Like thrillers should just be like a one and done book because rarely does the series get better. You know, like usually it's just too much. Speaking of that same thing, um, Do Not Disturb by A.R. Torre. This is the second book in the The Girl in 6E series. And this one, mm, it, it was eh. It was very meh compared to the first one. I loved the first one. I, I gave it five stars. I loved it. Um, about the cam girl who's a serial killer and she locks herself in her apartment because she's afraid to leave and kill someone. Loved it. And then I'm like, why is this... A series because then I read the second book and it was boring I wasn't into it I didn't care anymore just make it a one and done Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna the only Kristen Hanna book that I have not liked um, I thought it was just way too long it was like almost 500 pages about these two friends and you're following them throughout their lives I thought most of it was boring and like I just didn't really care about these girls Midnight on Beacon Street by Emily Ruth Verona. Easily the worst piece of crap I've ever read in my entire life. This book sucked. If you've been on my channel, you know, like you've seen me rant about this in probably two videos so far. This is just the most boring thriller I've ever read in my life and it's only 190 pages. So what does that tell you? Here You End by Abbott Collar, another thriller I read recently that I just thought was convoluted, confusing, boring, ridiculous, and I hated everything about it. The Fury by Alex Michaelides. I think Alex and I are breaking up. Um, I love The Silent Patient with my whole heart, but this was not it. 
I was sick and tired of hearing about Barbara West and the performance and the narration of this book really just irritated me to no end. Giving Up the Ghost by Hilary Mantle. Um, I got this book, it's a memoir, because uh, she had endometriosis and I really wanted to read about her experience with endometriosis but I could not get into the writing style of this one. It's like the most boring intellectual kind of, I, I don't know, I was just bored out of my mind. I couldn't even get to the endometriosis parts because I just didn't care and honestly I don't even know who Hilary Mantle is. So, she's an author. Okay, good to know. Ring Shout. Um, I was really excited to read this book until I heard nothing but horrible, horrible reviews from all my friends. And honestly, it just sounds like a mess from what they told me. Tremblay, Growing Things. This is a short story collection. Once again, I'm kind of just parting ways with a lot of my short story collections that are sitting on my shelf unread. Um, haven't heard great things about this one. It's been sitting there for a long time, so it's getting a new home. Goblin by Josh Mallerman. Love this cover. It's stunning. It's beautiful. I love it so much. And that's why it's been sitting on my shelf for so long, because um, this is six novellas within a novel. Like, all six novellas have to do with the same town called Goblin. Um, and I try reading this, like, twice now, and I DNF'd both times. It was really boring, slow. I just couldn't get into it. I'm not a fan of Josh Mallerman's writing, so I'm parting my ways with this guy, even though it is stunning and beautiful and gorgeous, like I am. The inside is not so gorgeous, much like myself, no. <laughs> Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Cesar. I don't really understand the hype with this one. Um, I don't know why I said that Cesar, like, um, the guy from Kroll Show. <laughs> um, I just really couldn't get into this one. I, I just found it to be boring. I didn't care about the characters. Um, uh, I don't know. Just like the typical slasher that I don't care about. I thought the twists at the end were really bizarre. I don't know. I, I just, I think this one is overhyped. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. I never read this one because I heard that it has accurate um, representation for Holocaust victims and there's a lot of controversy around this one and like I just don't want to read something that is harmful or not accurate so. Still House Lake by Rachel Kane. I remember this one being okay. I don't really remember it and once again this is a freaking like seven book series or something insane and I have zero desire to continue with this series like I just really did not care that much for this first book. I think this one is another case of books that are overhyped and I, I just I don't give a shit. And then I think this is the last one um, Insomnia by Sarah Pinbro. I liked this book. Um, I think it was really interesting. I loved the insomnia representation and like, I don't know, I think it was a well done thriller. I liked it, but it's nothing that I'm obsessed with that I feel the need to hang on to. So I want someone else to read this and experience it because I did like it. I'm just not, I don't want to hoard it, you know? So that is it. These are all the books that I'm getting rid of. I'm either going to sell them or um, put them in little free libraries or give them to people, whatever. But look at that. I have a whole, well, this is trash. I have a whole clean shelf now. Um, I feel good about this. I feel good to get rid of some books. I'm reading through some backlisted books. So same thing, if I'm not like fully obsessed with them, I'm not going to hang on to them. And I feel good like actually reading through my backlisted books and getting through them, getting rid of things. I don't like clutter. I'm not someone that hangs on to things. I'm not a like clutter person. So seeing clutter, it's just, it's been driving me insane. So this makes my heart feel happy. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Expect to see some like backlisted uh, vlogs in the future. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.